Welcome back. We are part two of our navigation training and today we're going to use the D's of navigation in a bit more of a practical way. I hope that you've got your map ready and that you've got some way of measuring the distance on the route. What I'd like you to do is to follow a few instructions that I think are fairly straightforward and then have a go at planning a route using the map that you've chosen. Okay, so we've got a map in front of us now. This is an Ordnance Survey map. On this map, I would like to climb a big mountain and the big mountain that I have chosen is this one here. It's called Sliach and that's the point of my day. So I've already decided what I'm going to do. I am going to break that route into smaller parts. So I am starting um, down here. So this is a wee village called Kinloch I'm going to park my vehicle here and I'm going to plan my route from this point. So I'm able to uh, plan the route every time I change direction and I'll call that a leg of the journey. So moving all the way around here, coming up here and up this way and then we come into the mountain and I know that we go up here and onto the top. I've read the Monroe's book, so I can read the section on this mountain and I've got a really good idea about where I'm going. Before I leave, I am gonna break this journey down into small parts. So um, step one, my destination. So I'm parking my car here. My destination is gonna be the um, edge of this river here. When I get to this river, I will stop. So that's my destination. Um, I am gonna look at my distance and I'll use the edge of my compass as a ruler. On a compass, you've got the roamer here that tells you for the one to 50,000 map, you can use this, this little square here. You can see that just when you lay it onto the map over a grid square, that you might not be able to see that very well, but that actually is the, um, the distance there. So the grid square is a kilometre and it's broken into smaller parts using this measure. So I can measure the distance as it goes round to this point here and then I can decide how long that's going to take me. So let's say that that is about 1200 metres. So that is just over a kilometre and I'm walking with my big pack on at three kilometres per hour. One kilometre will take me 20 minutes. Um, and then I'll break that down again into smaller parts. So 20 minutes for one kilometre and then that 200 metres. So we're going to add on another couple of minutes for that. So that when I arrive in this area here, I, after about 20 minutes, I should begin to look for the river, which is the point that I'm trying to get to. Um, the description of that route, well, um, I'm going to be walking along a track. I'll have a big steep mountain on one side and I'll have a wee stream on the other. Uh, initially, I'll pass some buildings. So I'm aware of that, write that down. And the direction, well, if that's north and that's west, that's east and that's south, then I'm going north, west. That's quite straightforward. And we can look at how to use a compass uh, a bit later on. Um, any dangers that I'm thinking about? Well, I don't want to cross any water that's going to uh, sort of cause me problems. So um, I'd certainly be aware of these little streams and make sure that they're not going to, um, not things that I'd fall into and risk my life. But apart from that, it looks like a fairly straightforward route. Okay, so get your map out and plan a route and just use the D's of navigation in the planning so that when you get to the, um, the route itself, you've got a sense of, uh, of how to find your way around the mountainside. If you've chosen a city map, just use the same thing. The only thing that might be a bit different is the uh, scale. So just check how the scale works on the map that you're using. Certainly on Ordnance Survey maps, a square, the, the, the grid squares on the map represent a kilometer and that makes it quite easy to do.
So another wee challenge, if you're anything like me, you're beginning to get a little bit of cabin fever in lockdown and starting to think about what I can do for a trip. Where can I go when this is all over? So what I'd like you to do is plan a trip. And I have given you a couple of things to think about. There's a budget for this trip. £35 per day per person. That's for your food and your accommodation. Transport. Only public transport or you can go on your bike or you can go in a canoe or whatever you want to do. But um, you can certainly walk, but you're not taking a car or a van or a camper van. Duration, um, three to four days. So a good trip gives you plenty of time with the aim of exploring Scotland. What can you do in three to four days that will help you to explore Scotland? The mountains, the coastline, the cities, historic sites that you're interested in. Maybe you want to get to the most remote place that you can in that time. So plan your trip, write it in your book and share that with somebody that you live with. You might be inviting them on this trip or it may be something that you want to do with friends. It depends on your age and it depends on the situation that you're in. And it certainly won't happen until lockdown's over. But it's great to have a plan. So... In today's course, we've talked about how to navigate, how to plan for a trip that is mountain based, that uh, we're using the D's of navigation for. Um, we're planning a trip, might be a city, we can certainly use the D's for that. When we're on that uh, journey, then we use the D's to help us find our way around. And then this additional challenge of just planning a trip so that in time you have got a, a little plan up your sleeve for when this lockdown is all over. Keep well, keep safe, and we'll check in with you next week.